in order to win, conservatives need to do more than criticize and complain. What's at stake is the very survival of our way of life. This is an incredible opportunity. This November, the people are going to vote to stop the destruction of our country, and they're going to vote to rescue America's future. You can't be pro-insurrection and pro-cop. You can't be pro-insurrection and pro-democracy. You can't be pro-insurrection and pro-American. Well, the current president, the former president, the former vice president, all in Washington, D.C. over the past day and a half with those sound bites. This as gearing up for 2024 already before we get to the midterms. Wall Street Journal, Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, jockey for position ahead of potential 2024 showdown. A person close to Mr. Trump said he wasn't concerned about other would-be 2024 candidates, including former Vice President Mike Pence, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, and several other conservative senators, quote, only Ron matters. Meantime, there's a new poll out of New Hampshire on the Democratic side, just out, University of New Hampshire, 2024 Dems, first choice presidential contenders, Pete Buttigieg. Oop, go backwards. Can we go backwards? No? Can't see it? Uh, this is if you want Joe Biden to run or not, someone else. There we go. Pete Buttigieg, the Secretary of Transportation, leads over Joe Biden, the current president, the vice president, down at 6%. This is in New Hampshire. Anyway, let's bring in our panel. Trey Gowdy, former congressman from South Carolina. Leslie Marshall, in studio, Democratic strategist, Fox News media analyst, host of Fox's Media Buzz, Howard Kurtz. Let's start with the Democrats. I mean, that poll... Kind of eye-opening, Leslie? Yes, it is. I thought Gavin Newsom, my governor of California, would be higher than that. Um, although I love Pete Buttigieg. I think I think you like him well. You've had some uh, awesome uh, conversations with him. I'm very surprised that he's that high. Uh, I'm not surprised about the uh, vice president. But, you know, we do have some time. And I think as we see things turn around, I think that we'll see those polls turn around as well. And I certainly hope that Democrats get behind uh, the nominee, which I believe will be the president, and, you know, take a page from the Republican hand book like they did uh, when a Donald Trump was their nominee. On the Republican side, Howie, it is interesting to see the former president, the former vice president in these kind of dueling speeches. And as I mentioned with Mark Short, kind of talking past each other in various ways a couple of times. Mike Pence is speaking in this coded beltway language. There are those who prefer to focus on the past. Everybody knows he's talking about Trump, but he's treading lightly because he wants Trump voters. And he says, we agree on all the issues, except our focus is different. Donald Trump was smart, took his aides advice today and largely focused on crime in his speech, the first uh, time he's been back in Washington. Uh, but he did get in his own coded message by saying, I won in 2016. I won in 2020. Ergo, the unproven stolen election charges. And really Real quickly, Brett, um, it's kind of amazing, but Donald Trump is getting much more coverage than the incumbent president. Uh, and now, much of it is negative about hearings and investigations, when he's going to declare. But it reduced the Biden uh, clip that you just played, saying Trump lacked courage on January 6th, to a sidebar. Uh, and I think that negative coverage of Donald Trump has always helped him because it riles up his base. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Trey, here's another little clip from the Pence uh, Trump back and forth today. And that it's absolutely essential at a time when so many Americans are hurting, so many families are struggling, that we don't give way to the temptation to look back. But I think the time has come for us to offer a bold, positive agenda to bring America back. America's story is far from over. And in fact, we are just getting ready for an incredible comeback, a comeback that we have no choice but to make. We don't have a choice. You know, I get a lot of people on social media, Trey, who say, you know, you're focusing on 2024 already. We haven't gotten to November 2022. Obviously, this is all setting up for whatever that midterm election is going to be. How do you see this? You know, Brett, I would struggle to find two people with more different personalities than Mike Pence and Donald Trump. Uh, I, I just, you know, I served with Mike Pence. It just, I think they were able to put their differences aside to win in 2016 and then to govern, but those differences were exacerbated on January the 6th. I don't see it as Trump versus Mike Pence. I see it as, are you Trump and only Trump, or are you open to an alternative? Are you open to the idea that you can be conservative with a less active social media account? 
I just think right now Mike Pence is kind of the face of that other side. But you mentioned Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, Mike Pompeo, uh, Tommy Cotton, uh, and there may be others. I, there, there will be others. Yeah. It's not going to be like 2016. Cast of thousands. Not going to be like 2020. It might be like 2016 when we had uh, tons of people on a debate stage. Uh, meantime, the recession and what this looks like. Is it a recession? Here's the back and forth on that word. Two negative quarters of GDP growth is not uh, the technical definition of recession. It's not the definition that economists have traditionally uh, relied on. He may want to call it something else, but um, the American people are feeling the pain of, uh, of that recession. We're going to get the GDP numbers on Thursday, Leslie. I mean, it's tough, this whole definition back and forth. I have seen in the past 72 hours economists not as pessimist and people like the CEO of Citicorp saying it's not imminent and we thought it was. The reason is even though it's a tiny bit and a tiny blip, they've seen uh, retail numbers go up. Certainly we've seen job numbers go up. We see gas prices coming down, unemployment staying low. But, you know, we do still have that 9.1 and like you said, new numbers coming out. Um, I, I don't think when it comes to, uh, you know, a recession that the fat lady is at the mic. I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. The idea of moving the goalposts and saying it's not a recession, even though it's traditionally been two negative quarters of growth. They have planned this for days, and they are going to get ridiculed by it by most of the mainstream media, but some media liberals are backing, oh, Biden has appointed. Recession? What recession? Uh, I don't think it's going to fly. Trey, the definition? I don't think most Americans care. Uh, I, I, for one, speak on behalf of all Americans who cannot define what a recession is. We do know, uh, however, know what the word bad means. Whether it's <laughs> gas prices, whether it's inflation, whether it's the border, whether it's crime, there's just this sense that things are not going well, whatever you want to call it. All right. We'll call it the end of the panel. Panel, thanks so much. <laughs>